Welcome back as we look at the Song of Songs written by Solomon and we're looking at chapter 7 verse 13. There the mandrakes give off their fragrance and the finest of fruits are at or beside our doors or gates. New delights as well as old which I have saved or laid up for you my lover. So when we look at this portion, we must remind ourselves that mandrakes are also mentioned in Genesis 30, verse 14 to 16, where a basket full of this short-stemmed herb was considered so valuable it could purchase a night of intimacy with Jacob for Leah. And from their encounter, Ishekar was born. <laughs> it was also called a love plant or a love apple. It's a pungent herb and it could relate to her open invitation to remain intimate. The lure of the smell is intoxicating and it seems to act as the fragrance of love, almost as a spiritual aphrodisiac. Yeah, allegorically, that is what it most probably represents. And at our gates, there are all manner of choices, excellent, pleasant things, which traditionally has been translated as fruit this whole image probably alludes to an ancient custom in many countries to garnish the posts of the door of, a newly, of the newly married couple or persons with branch trees and its fruits and flowers which makes it inviting to enter in. And these all manner of pleasant fruits may denote the plenty, variety and excellency of the blessings of grace and of the graces of the Spirit believers have from Christ. So this is the beautiful garnishing, if you wish, that she carries that draws Jesus closer to her. The gates or doors would refer to the private and intimate nature of the union, but it could also refer to the senses being ready to receive whatever they need to receive in their encounter. And these two views are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Here, the excellent things, even if understood as fruit, are in plural form, and they represent those characteristics by which we can feed upon that makes us more attractive to God. So well cultivated, they supply a harvest upon harvest. Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, perseverance, goodness, kindness, humility, meekness, faith, virtue, and bundles of hope, but to name a few. And even though we all share in the harvest, ultimately, the glory of that harvest belongs to the Lord. She also affirms the fact that only the things that God has established in her life will remain, and so the same for us. And anything new will be built upon the foundation of His grace, His person, in our lives, when we collaborate with Him in that unison, in that unity of the covenant. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay or straw. But on the judgment day, the fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. And if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. And here she certainly has laid up a bounty of excellence for him. But it also belongs to her. So this change not only glorifies him, it benefits her, her husband, king lover. And it just so happens that today I chose this, this painting behind me, which is based on that scripture. That we can see the foundation is Jesus. We build the gold of divinity, which is then covered by the silver of the anointing and giftings of God within the spiritual life. And above, we see all the uh, precious stones that go upon that. So when we are assessed, we are assessed by our character. We are assessed how much we've built on the foundation of Jesus. How much of God have I taken upon myself in my growing and maturing? And then how much has his anointings and giftings influenced that character to become more precious? And how much have I walked with him in and through the adversity of life under that se severe pressure that crystallizes beautiful things in our life? So be blessed as we look 
at this beautiful scripture. And like the Shulamite, let us go and look. Let us examine ourselves and let us see which are the areas that God still wants from us that we are withholding possibly. And which are the areas where we need to grow and develop even more to, to yield that fruit. And which areas does he have to prune to make us even more fruitful in him. So with those thoughts, be blessed and may the fullness of his destiny be yours in Jesus' name. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I am yours. Know that all that you have established in my life, all the gold and silver and precious stones, are the fruit of my collaboration with you, growing and cultivating that character that you want in my life. And all the glory and my thankfulness belongs to you. Come and celebrate your great victory in me, in Jesus' name. Amen.